You talked about Prime Minister Modi's visit to Moscow last month, and a lot of people here were very upset to see that embrace between the two leaders. You know, in our part of the world, when people meet people, they are given to embracing each other. It may not be part of your culture, but I assure you it's part of ours. Also, they were quite upset to see India overtake China in terms of the biggest importer of Russian crude oil. And also, they say they're disappointed that there hasn't been an explicit condemnation of the full-scale invasion of Ukraine. India is a big oil consumer. It's a big oil importer because we don't have oil. Now, it's not like there's a political strategy to buy oil. There is an oil strategy to buy oil. There's a market strategy to buy oil. And also, they say they're disappointed that there hasn't been an explicit condemnation of the full-scale invasion of Ukraine. So... In light of that, I'm just wondering whether you had difficulty today persuading President Zelensky that India is not favouring Russia, but is indeed pursuing a policy of non-alignment. I think it was a perfectly convivial conversation. I think it was very constructive. I think there was a lot that we said, which he heard with a great deal of attention. Uh, he knows that uh, we mean uh, well by Ukraine. Uh, he knows that... You know, we are uh, uh, today, uh, uh, ex you know, very, very keen that this conflict should come to an end. Uh, Minister Nick Beek from BBC News. You talked about Prime Minister Modi's visit to Moscow last month, and a lot of people here were very upset to see that embrace between the two leaders. Also, they were quite upset to see India overtake China in terms of the biggest importer of Russian crude oil. And also, they say they're disappointed that there hasn't been an explicit condemnation of the full-scale invasion of Ukraine. So, in light of that, I'm just wondering whether you had difficulty today persuading President Zelensky that India is not favouring Russia, but is indeed pursuing a policy of non-alignment. And secondly, because of that meeting in Russia last month, I think... Prime Minister Modi is probably the most significant, influential world leader to have spoken to both sides recently. What personal role could he play in some sort of pursuit of peace? Thank you. Regarding uh, your question, you know, in our part of the world, when people meet people, they are given to embracing each other. It may not be part of your culture, but I assure you it's part of ours. Uh, so... In fact, today, I think I saw the Prime Minister also embrace President Zelensky, and I've seen him do it with a number of other leaders in a number of other places. Uh, so I think perhaps we have a uh, slightly cultural uh, a gap here in terms of uh, what uh, these courtesies mean. Uh, in terms of, uh, uh, you know, what you asked about the oil issue, Look, uh, you know, India is a big oil consumer. It's a big oil importer because we don't have oil. Now, it's not like there's a political strategy to buy oil. There is an oil strategy to buy oil. There's a market strategy to buy oil. So uh, the figures of where we get our oil imports go up and down. It depends on the state of the market. But it would definitely, I think, the fact that the market is tight that today big suppliers like Iran and Venezuela, who used to supply India, uh, are, uh, uh, are constrained uh, from operating freely in the markets, I think is a factor which, which needs to be taken into account. Uh, regarding uh, you know, the conversation uh, between the Prime Minister and President Zelensky, I think it was a perfectly convivial conversation. I think it was very constructive. I think there was a lot that we said, which he heard with a great deal of attention. Uh, he knows that uh, we mean uh, well by Ukraine. Uh, he knows that you know, we are uh, uh, today uh, uh, ex you know, very, very keen that this conflict should come to an end. And essentially what the message from our side uh, uh, to him, which you know, which surely would have not come as a surprise to him, is that, you know, if there is anything that we can do in any way, uh, you know, um, in sort of uh, uh, up front or behind or supporting somebody, you know, uh, it's, it's the uh, objective that we are interested in. 
uh, rather than the process. We are willing to do whatever we can because we do think that the continuation of this conflict is, is uh, terrible for obviously for Ukraine itself and for the world as well.